All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you an explicit example of how to calculate the transpose of a linear transformation and the matrix of T transpose. Because I have done a proof on this, but it's a bit hard to digest. So maybe the example will help you. So let V be the space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to one, so the space of AX equals AX plus B, and W be the space R2, and consider the following linear transformation, T from V to W, or T of P. What it does, it evaluates P at zero, and subtracts P at one, and does P of zero plus P prime of zero. So, for example, I don't know if you want a t of uh, 1 plus 2x equals, so it evaluates it at 0, so you get 1, minus 2 times this evaluated at 1, it's 3, and it evaluates it at 0, and the derivative, which here is 2, at 0, and you get uh, 1 minus 6, which is minus 5, and then 3. So indeed, it's a linear transformation from a polynomial space to R2. And the first question is, if f of ab equals to a minus 2b, the point is, it's a linear functional from R2 to R, so it's in W star. The question is, calculate t transpose of f. Now, what is T transpose, and what is T transpose? It takes an element of W star as an input and spits out an element of V star. So this thing, it's in V star, which means it's a linear transformation from polynomials to R. In other words, it takes a polynomial as its input. So T transpose F of P, and again, that's in V, which is P1. And what does the transpose do? It just flips F and T. So it flips both sides, almost like a dot product, but removes this T. So it's F of T of P. But remember, now we can use a definition of T. So it's F of uh, P0 minus 2p1, and then p0 plus p prime of 0. And remember what does f do? It takes a, its first entry, and subtracts 2 times the second entry. So it's p of 0 minus 2p of 1 minus 2 times p of 0 plus p prime of 0. And that just becomes p of 0 minus 2p of 1 minus 2p of 0 minus 2p prime of 0. And if you do that, you get minus p of 0 minus 2p of 1 minus 2p prime of 0. So this is what T transpose F does. It's the functional that takes p as its input and spits out minus p of 0, minus 2p of 1, minus 2p prime of 0. And indeed, it's a linear transformation from polynomials to real numbers. So it's a linear function. All right, and now the second question is, let's calculate the matrix of a T transpose. And we'll compare it to the matrix of T. So find, well, to find a matrix, we need bases. So first of all, let's take the standard bases of V, 1x basis for V, and then gamma, which is the standard basis of W, so the standard basis of R2. And then I'd like to remind you, given a basis for vector space, we can define what's called the dual basis beta star, which is F1 and F2. 
And remember, what are those F1s and F2s? So F1 is 1 at the first vector and 0 at the second vector. So this is F1. And F2 is the opposite. It's 0 at the first vector and 1 at the second vector. And same thing with gamma, so the dual basis is G1 and G2, where again, G1, it's 1 at the first basis of, first vector of gamma, so it's 1 at 1, 0, and 0 at 0, 1, and the opposite at the other one, that's G2. Again, think 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, just like the standard basis. Okay, good. Now that we have those two bases, we, need, we can now find the matrix of T transpose. Remember, for T transpose, you flip and you put stars. So it goes from gamma star to beta star. We know it's a two by two matrix, so let's just write it as A, B, C, D. And the goal is to find A, B, C, and D. Now, um, what does it mean to find the matrix of T transpose? It means evaluate T transpose at the basis vectors. And here are the basis vectors at our gamma star. So T transpose of G1, T transpose at G2. You take T transpose at the basis vectors and you express them in terms of your output vectors, which here are in beta star. So it's in terms of F1 and F2. So let's evaluate T transpose of G1. In other words, T transpose of G1, by definition of A, B, C, D, that's AF1 plus uh, CF2. Okay, now, this thing's your two functionals. In particular, we can evaluate them at certain vectors. It wouldn't make sense to evaluate at 1, 0, and 0, 1, because the inputs of the FIs, they're polynomials there in that polynomial space. So what we could do, we can evaluate the, the fi's at one, for example. So we get t transpose of g1 at one equals a f1 at one plus c f2 at one. But now let's use this nice picture. f1 at one is one, so this is one and f2 at 1 is 0, so this is 0, and on the one hand, what you're left with is a. On the other hand, what's that definition? t transpose of g1, you flip it, so it's g1 at t of 1. But, remember what t does. It takes a polynomial as its input and evaluates this p of 0 minus 2p of 1, p of 0 plus p prime of 0. Well, 1 at 0, so it's g of t of 1, so 1 at 0, that's 1, minus 2, 1 at 1, that's minus 2. And then zero, 1 at 0, that's 1, and then 1 prime at 0, that's 0. So we have this g1 at 1 comma minus 2, 1 plus 0, and that's g1 at minus 1 comma 1. Okay, and now what is g1? Remember, we just know what it does on basis vectors, but minus 1, 1, we can decompose it in terms of basis vectors. So it's g1 at minus 1, 1 comma 0, plus 1, times 0, 1, which is minus 1 times g1 of 1, 0. Remember, everything is linear. Plus 1 times g1 at 0, 1. And now remember this nice picture. g1 at 1, 0, that's 1. 
g1 at 0, 1 at 0. And in the end, you get minus 1. So, putting all this gibberish together, we then get a equals minus 1. And that gives us our first entry of the matrix. And don't worry, I'm not going to do it for every vector, but um, let's maybe do the same thing, but with x. So let's see. Now let's do the same thing. Sorry. <laughs> now I remember why we're doing that. Because we have this equality, okay? We have it with the F1. We already figured out what A is. Well, to figure out what C is, let's use the fact that F2 is 1 at X. So in particular, take the same identity and evaluate it at X. So T transpose of g1 at x, that's, I think, a f1 at x plus b, sorry, plus c f2 at x. And again, here's the polynomial x. And we know f1 is 0 here. f2 is 1 here. Again, f1 is 0 at x. f2 is 1 at x. And that equals to c. C. Once we found that out, find out what this is, we can figure out what C is. But remember, definition of T transpose, that's G1 of T of X. And let's see, again, let's use this definition. X at 0, that's 0. Minus 2, X at 1, that's 1. X at 0, it's 0. Plus X prime, which is 1. At 0, it's 1. So we have g1 at minus 2, comma 1. And again, you can express it as g1 at minus 2 times 1, 0, plus 1 times 0, 1. And that's minus 2, g1 at 1, 0, plus 1 at 0, 1. G, sorry, g1 at 0, 1. Now, again, this nice picture, g1 at 1, 0, that's 1. g1 at 0, 1, that's 0. So that's 1 and that's 0. And we get minus 2. So c is minus 2. So again, going back all the steps, c is minus 2. And well, the question is, how do you figure out the other ones? Entirely similar, but you start with T transpose of G2. So the point is that T transpose of G2 equals, um, let's see, so B times F1 plus D times F2. F2, and then... Well, let's see what we should find. I think we should find that B is 1 and D is 0. But let's see. 1 and B is 0. If, again, I take this equality, apply it to 1, and I apply it to X, and then you finally get that this matrix, I believe, is just uh, 1, 0. And that's on the one hand, we have our matrix T transpose, and now on the other hand, let's calculate the matrix of T and see what happens, and hopefully we get the transpose. Let's see. So now let's calculate the matrix of T from beta to gamma, and that's much easier. You just calculate the T of 1 and T of x, and express it in terms of 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now, t of 1, I calculated that already. It's 1 minus 2, and then uh, 1 plus 0. So that's minus 1, comma 1, which is minus 1 times 1, 0, plus 1 times 0, 1. So we get minus 1 and 1. OK, good. And then uh, t of x. That becomes then, so 0 minus 2. So I just use the definition of t. 
And uh, so zero plus zero, that's minus two comma zero, which is minus two times one zero plus zero times zero one. So, this, so what this is saying is, yeah, the first column is minus one one, the second column is minus two zero, and yes, that works because here we have T transpose, which is minus one, one, minus two, zero. Here we have T, which is minus one, minus two, one, zero. And notice it's precisely the original matrix transpose. So the matrix of T transpose equals to the matrix of T transpose. So indeed it is correct, so that's nice. And here we did it like the slow way, but indeed you can just, if you understand the proof of it, you can just use the proof. And it's really just an illustration of that. Um, all right, I hope you like this dual space extravaganza. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.